Hi everyone, and welcome to Film Club Live. My name is Ben, I'm from Film Club, and I'm with young reporter Jack. Hi guys, I'm Jack, and we'd like to welcome you to today's webcast, which is coming to you live from the Edinburgh International Film Festival, where we're broadcasting interviews with filmmakers all week. We're here today with Benjamin Pascoe, director of Leave It On The Track. It's a fun and entertaining documentary about the fastest growing sp women's sport in the world, roller derby. So welcome, Benjamin. Thank you, it's great to be here. Good to have you. Uh, just before we get started, I'm coming to say to the film club members watching, please send a question in. You're more than welcome to, and we'll put them to Benjamin. So you can do that via Twitter, email, or text. Details are scrolling somehow. It is running underneath the screen. And also, if there is a te technical hitch, bear with us. We'll fix it as soon as possible. So let's get started. Benjamin, can you tell us a bit about what your film, Leave It On The Track, is about, all about? Yeah, um, this film is about the uh, re-emergence of roller derby. It's based on a league named the TXRD Lone Star Roller Girls from Austin, Texas, who sparked the re-emergence of roller derby back in 2001. Um, now fast forward a few years, 2009, I'm at the championship game. You got the Hellcats versus the undefeated Cherry Bombs. And what I did is I showed up in Austin, Texas to film this game and my idea was, my plan was to kind of use the game as a backdrop and then go to the game and then we cut back to the girls uh, for interviews. And then we go to the game, we cut back and we learn about the rules of the game. How to score points, player positions, that kind of thing. Um, then we learn about the history of the game, we learn about uh, the game's affiliation with the movie Whip It and how Drew Barrymore came to Austin to interview all the roller girls. And so we got the natural story arc of the game and then we've got the emotional story arc of some of the key characters involved, like Cherry Chainsaw, Cherry the Law Chainsaw. So You know how to sell your film, don't you? I want to watch it again. <laughs> I've already seen it once. <laughs> so your film is showing at the festival this week. Yeah. Film club young reporter Sabina asks, is this the most memorable experience you've had in your career until now? Wow, that's a good question. Who asked that question? Sabina. Sabina? Savina, that's a very good question. Is that the most memorable experience I've had? Well, it's certainly up there. Um, uh, you know, having the world premiere here in Edinburgh, I gotta tell you, what a beautiful city. Uh, the people are wonderful. You know, anywhere you go, there might be great architecture, great city, that kind of thing, but it's really all about the people. And the people have been fantastic here. It's a wonderful festival. So I would put it very, probably top three experience of, of my professional career. Pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. Pretty, pretty prestigious. And um, we've got another question. Uh, just before we go into the details of the film, another question from film club reporter Luke Beer. He wants to know, how did you get into the film industry? How is it that you're sat here right in front of us? Okay, Luke, another good question. Um, well, I got my start, my undergraduate uh, degree is a Bachelor of Fine Arts in performance. And I got that degree in Southwest Texas State University, where my dad taught. And so I got my start in the industry as an actor, uh, being on the set. I've stood in for Peter Gallagher in the movie The Underneath, and that really just got me familiar with being, you know, on the set and having the camera pointed at you and being under the lights and that Tell kind of thing. Tell me about that. And so, yeah, right? <laughs> you got these guys right here. So I got my start as an actor, and, you know, I just, you know, it's not that I got bored acting. I'll always be an actor. I'll always act in in projects, um, in graduate school. In fact, I acted in everybody's project. It's not about money for me, it's about having fun. It's about, it's about my, my children, I want them to see me. I don't have children right now, but it, at some point I am gonna have children. I want them to see me when I was a young man. Yeah, so, you know. That's a pretty cool idea. Yeah. So I got my start as an actor. Cool. So during the film, it looks like you got to know the players really well. How long did you spend filming them and how did you get them to be so open in front of the camera? Okay. Um, you know, I really did get to know those players pretty well. And the reason I got to know them pretty well is because my brother is the manager of the Hellcats. My brother's Johnny Stranger. Really? It's, yeah, really? that's a fact. Johnny Stranger's I wouldn't quite lie to a character. You, I wouldn't lie to you on the air live. Wow. So yeah, um, so I got to know the girls very well. We were there for 10 days filming. And I mean, I've got my whole, you know, I'm in Ohio getting my MFA at Ohio University School of Film. And so Johnny calls me up and says, hey Ben, we just made the championship. Hellcats are going to the Calvello Cup. And I'm like, oh, that's awesome, dude, that's great. He's like, you gotta come down and film it. I'm like, well, Johnny, I'm in my thesis year here at graduate school, and I'm a little busy here. And, uh, and then it clicked. You know, maybe this could be my thesis project. And so Johnny got me in all the practices. Uh, and when I'm, I'm, I felt like a celebrity just being Johnny's brother. Um, so, you know, it was really, 
getting the girls to open up to me, they, they'll open up. I mean, these are very open women, and I was in their hood. You know, I was in their zone. <laughs> their territory. So, yeah, I was in their territory. So they were very comfortable talking with me and looking, talking to the camera. Um, I had my, I've got a filmmaking buddy named Rob Wheeler who uh, co-produced this production, and he was there with his camera, and he's got great energy. And so, when I, so I did 10 days, uh, including the game footage, and got interviews and stuff. And then I came back to Ohio to edit. And I've still got Johnny and Rob Wheeler uh, in Austin getting the pickup shots that I need. I'm like, Johnny, I, I need, Johnny's going through archive footage too. He's searching the archive footage for things like, uh, you know, someone talks about Rocky Casbah being cocky, cocky Casbah. And so I'm like, I need footage of Rocky being cocky. And so Johnny's searching the archives, searching the hard drives. Oh, here is a good shot of Rocky being cocky. She lifts up some girl's dress. Okay, that's good. So you got some really quite exceptional access yes. and some inside, in, inside help. Yeah, that's absolutely. So I have to ask, did you ever put the skates on yourself to understand the sport a bit more? <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> but if you see the movie, Johnny has. Um, so I, I like my ankles just how they are, unbroken. I like my <laughs> knees just how they are. I'm probably going to stay like that. I roller skated as a kid, and I'm sure I'll roller skate again. But, I, you know, no, I, I didn't. But, you know, does a coach need to go out there and run a marathon to teach a marathon runner how to run a marathon? I don't know if that makes sense, but, you know. That makes sense. A good point. Good yeah, point. I, I don't need to put the skates on. I love the idea of it, but not right now. It was actually the skating that really was, I mean, everything was good, but the skating races were really superb. Um, I, what I wanted to ask you is how did you manage to capture that sense of speed and the frenetic power that, that was in all of those races? How did you do that? Oh, wow. You mean like where was the camera positioned or? You really get a sense that you were there. And I just wonder okay. as a director, how did you manage to do that? Okay. Okay, good. Um, well, first of all, I've got five cameras to cover the game. Uh -huh. And so that helps. Okay. Okay. I'm in the middle. Um, girls are skating around the track like this. I'm in the center. I got Rob up here and I got my brother-in-law, Ernie, up here. We had an extra camera. And so I'm like, Ernie, you're up here, dude. You're taking footage. <laughs> And Ernie got some awesome shots. Ernie's <laughs> yeah. leading the skaters perfectly. We all got better during the second half because we're used to it by now, the movement and that kind of thing. And I'd been doing this for a while. So, so I've got me in the middle, Rob up here, Ernie back here. I got um, Galen is roaming around. He was awesome. I got Josh who's getting just audience reaction shots. And I said, Josh, dude, I, you're going to want to go to the game because that's where the action is. You're going to want to be on the game because that's where it looks like it's most fun but you need, I need audience reaction shots because I got to be able to cut away to stuff. And so I had five cameras and then another guy named John just happened to show up with a camera. So I'm like, you're working for me now. Start taking footage. I've not, I'm not surprised it's, it was slightly difficult at first to follow it because the rules can be slightly complicated. Sure. But luckily we have a clip now. We're going to show you some of the rules. Okay, great. Have fun. The basics of roller derby are as follows. There are three positions on the track. Each team fields a pivot during each jam. A jam is a one minute period and it's the longest period that we skate for with 30 second breaks in between. So each team will field a pivot. The pivot, who is the person up front, wears the pivot stripe and goes on the helmet like this. We wear helmet panties. Pivot position is kind of like your pace setter. The pivot is the last line of defense. They don't have to, but they tend to stay in the front and kind of like slow the pack down or speed the pack up. You're kind of like the leader of the pack. Each team also fields three blockers in positions one, two, and three. And these three blockers, along with the pivot, make up the pack. So each team fields those people. There's two pivots, two blocker ones, two blocker twos, and two blocker threes. These people make up the pack. Behind the pack of people that's here, there's two jammers, one from each team. Jammers is someone who is... Point scorer. Point scorer, but someone who can move about uh, through the traffic. Nimble. Know, be able to dart in and out of all the girls, be aggressive enough to, uh, to get through and not be afraid of being smacked around by the blockers. So as you can see, roller derby can certainly be an intense sport. How tough and athletic do you need to be to play roller derby? And just how competitive can it get? Well, I mean, I think you have to have a certain amount of athleticism for sure. Um, but more important than that, I think, you have to have the spirit. You have to have, you have to get to the derby and at least be willing to give it a shot. Um, I guess, you know, it doesn't take a great woman 
to be in the roller derby, I think roller derby makes a great woman, great woman, you know, and these women are empowered and, you know, they can, anybody, if you do anything, you know, over and over and you really try it, it can get better at it. And so all body types, all types of uh, women can, women can be in roller derby, I think. Yeah, of late, there's been uh, leagues um, made in uh, Britain. So they do exist, so you can join. If you're, yeah. if, you're, if you're really excited by some of the clips we've shown, you can join. Can I add something to that? Yeah. Um, I, I was invited to a local derby team, the Auld Reeky Roller Girls. From Edinburgh, are they? From Edinburgh. Ah. I was invited to one of their scrimmages recently, and it was just amazing. It's a different <laughs> game. I mean, I'm, in my movie, it's a bank track. Uh, this is a flat track league. And it's fast, and these girls are vicious. And <laughs> I'm not kidding. I really had a blast. I could, I could be a big fan of the Auld Reeky Roller Girls. I am, <laughs> yeah. I am already. Wave that flag. There's a team in, uh, there's the Jakey Bites, who's a men's team, local. Uh, and there's a team in Dublin and Glasgow. How do you pronounce Glasgow? Is it Glasgow or Glasgow? Go. Glasgow. Yeah. As in Pasco. Yeah. Okay. Pasco is in Glasgow. Okay. Check it, don't wreck it. Okay. Um, all of the uh, players in the documentary, they have these alter egos, um, character nicknames. Really like those. We specifically liked Anna Mossity. Mm. You get that? Love that one. Um, did you notice a difference in personality between the players on the track and off it? Well, I mean, on the track, they're, I mean, they're, they're I guess they're pumped up. They're in their zone. Off the track, though, they're just as animated. I mean, really, these are characters on and off the track. It's not like they're one person on the track and off the track they're... Well, no, I guess it high. is kind of like that, but there wasn't a drastic difference, at least in the interviews that I did with them. I mean, if I guess if I pulled one aside and we were just having a little chat, it would seem more down to earth, but they were all bigger than life. Wonderful characters. So is this the first documentary feature film you've made, and what do you enjoy most about the genre? This is the first feature documentary I've made, and what do I enjoy most about the genre? It's so unpredictable. You just never know where it's going to go. When I was making this project, it's my MFA project, it's my thesis project, one of my thesis advisors, Jack, gave me some great advice. He goes, Ben, keep that camera rolling. You never know what you're going to get. So I think that's really good advice. It's, you know, the more footage you have, the more space it takes up in the hard drive, the longer it takes to go through it, but there's a nugget in there. There's going to be something in there that's going to be worth it and awesome. You're going to be glad you didn't turn that camera off. There's a good tip for budding uh, documentary makers. Yeah. Um, you referenced it earlier, Whip It, a uh, 2009 film about roller derby. It's directed by Drew Barrymore. Correct. Her first feature debut, I believe. Yeah, and it was, uh, it was a big hit with our, our members. We just wonder if any way did that affect how you went about your film? Well, I, knowing that Whippet was just coming out when I was shooting this movie, and so it certainly did. It was playing in the back of my head, and it affected the questions that I would ask these girls. Did you like the movie Whippet, I would say. Um, did you have anything to do with the movie Whippet? And a couple of them did have, to, did have something to do with it. Sacrilicious was Drew Barrymore's body double, and she also got a cameo in the movie. Rocky Casbah is all over the movie. She's uh, one of the stunt doubles, and she's cool. skating around. And so, yeah, Whippet definitely influenced me, and I, I appreciate Whippet as a movie, you know? And in some ways, could you say this is a bit of a real Whippet, as it were? I mean, it can be seen as a, the real Whippet. Um, I don't want to say it, <laughs> but someone it. else can say it. <laughs> I'm cool with that. Okay. Uh, uh, so, we have a question here from Luxa from St. Mary's Abbott School. If you did make a live action film, who would be in it and why? Okay, who's the, who asked the question? Luxor. Luxor? Yeah. Luxor, what an awesome name, first of all. If I did make an, a live action film, what was the question now? Who would be in it and why? Anyone you wanted, any particular well, actor of course, for you. For me, it's Jack Nicholson. I would definitely have Jack Nicholson in it. Um, and who else would I have in it? Uh, Yourself, come on. Well, I might put myself <laughs> in it. A bit of a cameo. A bit of a cameo. Um, boy, that's a great question that provokes Jack a lot Nicholson's of thought. That's a great answer, though. Yeah. Be. I, in terms of a big, big Hollywood actor, stylish yeah. actor, you can't go too much further than that. That's, yeah. So now let's take a look at a clip of the two roller derby teams in action. This yeah. is probably going to be one of the most intense games that we've actually witnessed. The Ancavello Cup, the championship game. I've been super nervous if I stop and think about it for a while. It's the undefeated Jerry Bombs against the Hellcats. Nobody's going to come out and skate. No one. I'm not planning on going to the after party because I'm planning on leaving everything that I have on that track and not being able to walk. And 
So I was wondering, did you secretly support one team slightly more than the other, and why would that be? Okay, the answer to that question is yes. <laughs> I was pulling for the Hellcats. My brother manages the Hellcats. He I'm does. a Hellcat through and through, to be straight with you. Now, in the post-production, as a, you know, objective storyteller, I have to put that aside as best I can and represent both teams. But in my heart of hearts, I'm pulling for the Hellcats. <laughs> okay. And there we have a question from Tanvi at Newham School. And she says, if you could give me one piece of advice on how to be a great filmmaker, what would that be? Okay, Tamni? Tanvi. 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 Um, good question, Tanvi. Um, I would say be persistent. Um, you know, keep knocking on doors, and if the doors don't open, go to another door. If that door doesn't open, go to another door. Eventually, a door is going to open. Um, enthusiasm is contagious. So if you're enthusiastic about something and you're looking for a team, you're looking for a team to, to help you make your project, be enthusiastic about it and they will share that with you, I believe. Great stuff. And just qu quickly, um, is there any, um, any film in particular you'd recommend that you've seen at the festival? Oh, yeah. There's one called The Life and Times of Paul the Psychic Octopus. Yeah. That was fantastic. However, I was thinking to myself, well, where is he going to go with this story? How much is there there? Is there a feature documentary here? There certainly was a feature documentary there. One to look out for. So that's about an octopus that predicted World Cup results. I think we were a little short on time, so He's we're going to go to... Eight of eight. Eight of eight. It's right, right. perfect. Rest in peace. Um, let's go to um, Jack. We've got Sorry. one more question. Um, nope, we're yeah. not. Nope. Um, <laughs> one thing I wanted to tell you about, something me and Jack have been working on all day. We were very inspired by your film. Inspired by the racing, inspired by the passion, but most of all, we're inspired by the costumes. <laughs> we like the hats. Look what we got here. Whoa. Yeah? Nice, man. The very own film club roller derby team. Oh, that's fantastic. Am I looking pretty cool? <laughs> Do you want to try it, it on, Jack? Come on. Put a lot of hard work into this. You know what they call skaters who don't use one of those? Airheads. <laughs> yeah. Airhead. Classy looking guy. Brilliant stuff. Cool. Um, we're going to go to Twitter. We're going to have okay. a little question at Twitter. So I think you may have answered this before, but see if you can uh, tell us a bit more about it. So Tom asks, how, go how good are you at roller skating? Are you any good at all? And did you ever feel tempted to actually put them on during the training? OK, that was Thomas? Yeah. OK, Thomas, I I'd be lying if I didn't say I was probably in the top 10 roller skaters in the US. <laughs> No, I, 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 you know, I've always been somewhat athletic, and I think if I did put some skates on, I think I could, you know, haul butt around that track. Is that but pretty G-rating there? Haul butt instead of no, haul? No, no, it's fine. Okay. Um, I think I could be okay, you know? It is an incredibly athletic uh, sport, and uh, it's actually getting more and more credit. Certainly, I think it's the British version of it. It's been considered um, to be a sport in the Olympics in 2020, so it's really starting to gain credibility now. Um, right. Um, we are, I think we're all out of time. Unfortunately, that is all we have time for today. So thank you very much for watching and sending in all your questions and comments. And a special thanks to Benjamin for joining us today and providing us with such great answers. We wish you the best of luck with your film. My pleasure. Thanks for having me today. Much appreciated, Benjamin. And that is it for our time at the Edinburgh International Film Festival. Oh, um, but it's been a great time. We've spoken to lots of brilliant filmmakers just like Benjamin, lots of up-and-coming animators as well. So we want to say thanks to them. We want to say thanks to our film club members and clubs for tuning in, sending questions. We also want to say a huge thanks uh, to Da Vinci officers who've given us this lovely pad. Nice shortbread, top quality stuff. And finally, our biggest thank you to Edinburgh International Film Festival who've put on a brilliant show over this last two weeks. We really recommend you one day come up here and hopefully just one day you might be showing your own film as well, which would be pretty cool. And finally, finally, Film Club Live is back next month at the end of July, the last week of term in July. And we're going all Olympics on you because there is 
quite a big event coming to London in just a few weeks' time, the London 2012 Olympics. So we'll be talking about all kinds of sport films. So tune in for that. Until then, goodbye. Thank you.